God, thank you. I want you to give your, your pastors a big, big, great, big hand of love and appreciation. And, you know, this is what I see in them. It's, this is the dream team right here. I want you to extend your hand. This is a dream team. Like the Bible says, with one, you defeat a thousand. But with two, there's 9,000 more that we defeat. Isn't this amazing? And I believe that that's what's happening here and in this house. But even more, you have access to heaven. You have access. You're accessing heaven in the presence of God. I I was telling um, your wife, I was telling Shannon, Pastor Shannon earlier, I said, you say it, you pray it, and God will establish it. That's what it says in Job, right? But it's going to be the minute it comes out of your mouth, (laughs) it's like a done deal. Do you understand? Because there's unity there. There's such an example of love in this marriage, in this family. Family. I see it in the kids, and I see it on Shannon's face, Pastor Shannon's fa- face. You're doing a great job, Pastor Joshua. I- I'm telling you, you're doing a great job because I see a happy woman. Men, you're responsible for your, house, your wife's happiness in a way. Not all the way, but in a way. If your wife is miserable, you ought to ask yourself, what am I not doing or what am I doing that is actually affecting my wife, either positively or negatively. But this is an example right here. So, Father, I just see this, them as being a gate in the city, in, on the island, a gate of revival, a gate of transformation, that, yes, it'll be transformational uh, anointing that is resting upon you. The Lord has anointed you yeah, to set the captives free. There's a huge purpose of the anointing that he has put upon not just one individual, but two people that have become one and that are willing to be laid down lovers. So they lay their do- lives down for you, Lord, and I thank you for that. And they lay their lives down for each other and for their kids, and I thank you for that. But even mo- even deeper, they lay their li- li- lives down for for this whole island and i see this island being a light it's a light in in the world and god will will bring such a transformation that there will be a transformation on the streets in the businesses in the families i'm telling you we're going to start seeing households coming to the lord and being transformed we're going to see the prostitutes and the pimps and and those that are addicted and all of that god is going after the heart of those that are destitute and broken and seem to be hopeless and he's using this house to do it do you understand that so father i thank you for this anointing in their lives upon in their ministry but father i i just see them being so close to you it's because they're friends of god that's it you're friends of the lord yes and it's like when the lord just said i you know i i you're no longer my servants you're my friends we are friends. And in Hosea 2.14, it says that I will allure them, her, speaking of the bride, into the wilderness, not because to punish, but to, to, to be closer to you. And there he gives you a vineyard, fruitfulness. The song of your youth is the door of, valley of, the, uh, is the door of hope in the valley of trouble. And you will no longer call him your servant, but your husband. You're going to call the Lord. You're calling the Lord your husband now. It's a place of intimacy. It's a place of closeness. It's a place of one. I see the Lord trusting you with much. Much has been given to you, and much is required. (laughs) Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand for those two awesome servants. Friends of God, that's what I call you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here with you um, tonight. I'll be in Acts 16, starting at verse 8. Um, I, I just realized that I don't have my glasses. I don't know. I have the case, but I don't have my glasses. And these are prescription. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preach from the heart. I always write down way too much anyways, and I have a very limited time. So I'm going to just go for it. So if you see me squint, okay? 
If you see me squint, you'll know that it's because I'm really trying to <laughs> read this little writing on my, on my phone now because I think Pastor Shannon's uh, Bible, the writing is even smaller. I asked her, can I use your Bible? <laughs> when I saw that, I said, ah, I'm going to run. So here, this is, this is, I want to talk about a surrendered life accesses heaven. A surrendered life, a completely laid down lover type of life where we're willing to, to live for Jesus. I remember like a few, like last year, um, my mom was in a car accident and for some reason, um, the minute I heard that she had a car accident, my, my parents, they all live in Canada and have been away from, from home for almost 33 years now, 23 years in Vegas. We have eight grandchildren. You know all that, right? Two more are coming. One is coming in this month. My son is having a second baby, and it's a girl. And her name is Brightly. I'm telling you, you won't tell anybody yet. Nobody knows over there on the mainland, okay, except for the little family. Um, but And then Christine is pregnant with her fourth one. And so she's, she's going to have her baby in May. But So we have 10 grandchildren. We are blessed, blessed people. And I said yes to Jesus a long time ago. Yes, in, in becoming a, a believer and, a, you know, a daughter of, of my Heavenly Father and all of that. But then I said yes again when I went to Las Vegas, right, 23 years ago. And I'm the only one out of a family on both sides of the family, hundreds on both sides. There was five, six hundred cousins and, 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 and whatnot. At one point, my mom had counted, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm the only one, pretty much in the ministry and the only one in the state. Yeah, the only one. And I received the word from a couple of prophets about 13 years ago saying, listen, um, actually I was at, at the altar and I was, I was shaking and I was shaking. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm just gonna share it with you. I was shaking and it was a, pre a preacher. He was, at, he was talking about heaven invading earth. And I was shaking, and I said, what is going on? And I remembered a dream that I had during that week. I don't have dreams that often, but when I do have a dream, it's, it's, it means something. And so I go up there, and I'm shaking, and I said, what is going on with me? My whole family's there. The worship is going on. Two prophets are there, and they're just, they said, you're being set free from fear. I said, praise God, it's just such a good thing. Because I was afraid a lot. I had to choose to do things, do it afraid. Have you ever? You know, sometimes we want fear to leave. No. Our steps of faith in, the, in, the, in that direction and just totally trusting God and depending on God to actually, you know, start going in that direction, um, whether it's a phone call, whether it's talking to somebody, whether it's preaching, whatever it is that God is asking of you, that little obedience that he's asking of you, um, I have to do it afraid. So that day he says, you keep being set free. And he started to take away all the arrows that were, had been stabbing me in the back and anyone that jealousy and all of that that would cause you to, to paralyze, you know, to just have paralysis. And I said, Something else is going on again still because um, I, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm remembering this dream I had this week, and I need, I need the interpretation. And the, the dream was I, had twin, I was pregnant with twins, had twins, and then I was pregnant with another set of twins but never gave birth to those twins. And the baby twins, the babies that I have in my hands in the dream, one was talking like a man-child, like an immature adult, but it was a baby, and the other one wasn't. And I said, what does that mean? Oh, they said, oh, Paul, you're the apostle. These are the twins. The apostle and, and the prophet was born into this house. Paul, you're the apostolic person. And Denise, you're the prophetic you know, person. You're going to start school of, of prophets and teach the prophetic. And I'm like, what is that? I had no idea what that was. <laughs> like, what? And I said, I didn't know that, you know. And so they said, one of them said, this is what I see. Four generations of yours before you were supposed to walk in this anointing and this, have this destiny, this calling on their lives. But they were too frustrated 
you know, I was set free of being angry all the time. So I could see, I could see this. And they're too frustrated. It was too difficult for them to live this out where they were. We all come from the same area, French, Canadian, you know. So God, in his mercy and kindness, took you out of Canada in that place and planted you in Las Vegas so that you can live out your destiny. Wow. It's like, whoa. Do you know how many times I remember that word? Do you know how many times I war with that word? Do you know how many times I say yes to Jesus again when things get tough? And so forwarding this to about a year ago when my mom had an accident, and as soon as she had the accident, I heard that she had an accident, um, she, I, I heard the Lord said, the angel, I, I intervene in that accident. My mom would have been dead. And she explained the accident to me. She was, she, it was on black ice. And my dad, who has dementia, was, you know, in the passenger seat. She was driving, and she lost control. And basically, she, was, she said she felt like she was pulled out of her seat and thrown onto my dad's lap and her face was hi and her face was she was disfigured she was i love this pastor here i love this woman she's awesome she never gets old like she's like she's like she's got an anointing like you know god will preserve your youth like it as a the eagle you know yeah it's awesome um um where was i at it was really important it was, yes, my mom, they actually sent me a picture of my mom's face when she was, she was, she looked like a monster. And my mom's a pretty lady. I, it, it just, it grabbed me and I started to weep and I said, oh God, my mom, she needs me. I'm like, I'm really close to my mom, but this five other siblings, you know, over there, they all live close by. Um, and I, I, I'm like, I should, I should have been there for my mom. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm regretting being in Las Vegas. All of a sudden I'm, I'm like putting this whole cost about, you know, saying yes to God years ago. And I said, God, I'm supposed to be there to take care of my mom and my dad has dementia and all that. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to recling to me just like Ruth. Um, Naomi, uh, Ruth clung to Naomi when, you know, Naomi's telling her, go, go, you got it. You can't come with me. Your husband, my son is dead. Go, go, go. But she clung. The Bible says she clung to Naomi. She was saying yes to the God of Naomi. She was saying yes to the lifestyle of Naomi. She was saying yes and leaving behind her, you know, her, what she's familiar with. And that's what I did years ago, right? And Jesus says, I want you to recling to me like Naomi did, uh, Ruth did to Naomi. And I believe God is calling us to recling. Some of you that have been in the ministry or you've been serving God for years and, and maybe you're like... You you're looking back and said, should I, or should I, you, you get like this Egypt thing on, on you, whatever. You got to get rid of that because God has some greater things in the future and now in the future than he did in the past. God has said to me very clearly, I'm not even in my text yet. God has said to me really clearly, he says, I, I, I have been some times where I've been like weeping before the Lord and say, God, God, you remember when you rain in our house, it literally rain in our house. That was glorious that was your glory you know that's god please you know reign again not necessarily in that way but a manifestation of your supernatural presence in our house because it literally rained in our sanctuary and it wasn't the rain of outside okay it was in july and it was dry and it was yucky uh, it was just very hot and there was no rain so god just rained and i'm like god uh, are we going to have, are we going to see, are we going to see your glory? Are we going to see the signs, miracles, wonders? Are we going to see, I just reclung to you like Na Ruth did to Naomi. I, I want to see greater things in the future. I want to see households saved. I want to see thousands and thousands of the harvest coming in. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see movement. I want to see people lining up to come to church. What is this? They lined up to go to the theater for Star Wars 
hours and they're going to be lining up for four hours. And I'm like, God, how come is it that you do not get the lines right now? What is it? Is it the house that is dead? Is it me that's dead? And I said, oh, God. And I remember when I was in a prayer meeting and I'm weeping the whole time. And my son Samuel, it was a few years ago, he goes, Mom, tell me why you're crying. Because I'm like the weeping prophet or something. I cry. I travail. Like in prayer. I'm like, I, I, I'm, that's it. That's me. What, what can I say? And so he goes, Mom, tell me what you're praying for. What you're crying for. He goes, I go, I don't know. I am asking God to tell me if the generation that is coming, to whom we are going to give this whatever, you know, this minute, whatever, this calling that God, whoever God's going to raise up, are you going to want to be laid down lovers? Are you going to want to? It's going to cost you something. It's, are you willing? Is this like, are you willing? Like I, Samuel, I don't know. Uh, are you? Because I spend hours in prayer. I said, we spend hours. Not that our prayers, it's not my striving that does it. It's just that you begin to access heaven. You begin to access, you have access to the heart of the Father. And that you watch what the Father is doing in heaven. And that's what I want that to be my food. Is that your food? Samuel, is that what you want? It's not going to be easy sometimes. But are you clung to Jesus? <laughs> are you? And he just said, Mom, lay hands on me. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to need some help here. <laughs> My son was 22 or 23 at the time. And so God said to me very clearly, My final glory is greater than my former. And that made me shake. I'm like, So don't. Don't be so attached to the glory of the past. No, it's the truth. Don't be so attached to what I've done because what I am going to do and I am doing is greater than what you've seen. And what you've seen is pretty good, huh? Do you, do you understand that? Do you understand? So here in Acts, the, the power of a surrendered life, it accesses Heaven. In Acts 16, verse 8, it starts, oh, um, should I? Okay, there, oh, wow, this is awesome. I can read. So they passed by Mysia and went to Troas. Before that, okay, keep it right there. Before that, we see that they were gonna, uh, uh, Paul was going to go to Asia, but the Bible says that he was hindered by the Holy Spirit, to go to Asia. And then he wanted to go to Bithyn Bithynia, and he was hindered by the Holy Spirit to go to Bithynia. So Troas, as he says, they say here, was his third choice. So Paul is guided by hindrances. Right there. That's revelation. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> hey, if Pastor Morocco, Pastor Josh says it, I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm excited about it. See, he was, he was guided by hindrances. What is it and how is it that the Holy Spirit told him not to go here or not to go there? Was it circumstances? Was it an inner voice? Was it a prophetic word? Regardless, Paul got the point. You see, we have to align ourselves with the heart of the Father and begin to recognize the voice of God in more than English way, English language. We have to develop our language in our conversations and our dialogue with God. We've got to start recognizing that, yes, this is God speaking to me through this circumstance. He doesn't just always speak to us the same way. And I believe that God is going to start speaking to us and, and, make, and enlarging our ability to understand, to recognize his voice. Okay, so here he's guided by hindrance. Often the Holy Spirit will guide as much by closing doors as he does by opening doors. If you know what your no's are, you'll know what your yeses are. If you're not sure if you should go here or should go there or do this or do that, then when you're in doubt, go without. 
when, you, when you're not sure and the Holy Spirit is, seems to be telling you something, but you're not sure what it is, then wait. It says, wait on the Lord. The word wait does not mean inactivity. It means a watch, being watchful, being attentive, and that it's almost like you're hidden, you're hiding behind a bush, and you want to catch God. And when God shows up, you catch him. That's what it is. And so here Paul realized, oh, he's just going to go to Troas. He's just led, and he wasn't hindered, so he just went to Troas. And right there, what Paul did not know is through the being guided, guided by hindrances, God had a great plan for not only where he was going to go, but for him. Do you hear that? For him. If you can put up or uh, 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 respond well to the nose of God, you will tap into his perfect plan for you. Isn't this awesome? Like you can, you, you, will, you will tap into his love. You will realize that God is personal. It's not just about the great harvest. He's personal with you, Pastor Shannon and, and Josh. He's personal. He cares about your health. He cares about your emotional. He cares about your dreams. He cares about what you desire. Like I noticed lately, uh, I say it, and it's like, whoa, it happens. Like Pastor Shannon told me, she had a thought when she was at that conference about a little bracelet or something, that, and she just walked by a booth, and she thought, I always wanted one of those. And I'm, using, I'm stealing her story. Maybe she's already shared it. I'm not sure. And so she, like, not even what? Five minutes later, somebody came and put that bracelet on her wrist. Why? Because God loves you. God wants you to know that he hears you. Tell somebody, God hears me. Come on. Tell somebody that God hears you. Come on. Don't, I don't want you to tell them that God hears them. No, God hears you. Come on. Make a statement. God hears me. God loves me too. You see, the Bible says that we ought to love the Lord our God with everything we have, right? All, all might. And but we have to love our, uh, our neighbor as ourselves. And what I realized that a lot of us, we want to bypass loving ourselves. And we think that we can love people when we hate ourselves. We think that we can love well when we neglect ourselves. Hey, this is not me. It's the Bible that says this. It's Jesus himself that says, you got to love yourself to be able to love well. Do you love yourself well? Because sometimes we see that as being selfish. But that's a lie. That's a lie. If I can't stand the sight of me, how am I supposed to love others? Come on. I am the worst wife that I could ever be if I don't love myself. I can tell when I don't feel good about who I am. I'm kind of harder on my husband. He'll tell me, get some counseling, honey. You need to resolve some issues here. Because the issue is not with me. The issue is with you. You see? Because when we don't love ourselves, we want the person that is the closest to us to be who we're not. So, okay, I'm going to keep going. So Paul here responds really well. Okay, yeah, the word wait is really, really important sometimes when we don't know exactly. Just wait. Rest in the Lord, it says. Okay, catch him. Land in his land. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I love that. Paul responds well to the Holy Spirit. He's willing to lay down his life, his plans, for the, dis the direction of the Holy Spirit right there. So he just decides to go um, to go to Troas, and there he gets a vision, okay, a night vision. How many of you know that when you pursue love, Okay, when you pursue him and you just don't care about your plans as much as you care about his plans, God begins to, he, then he takes care of your, your life and what you need, you see. And so because of Paul's good response to the no, he was, he was this is what happened. God wanted to give him a whole continent, Okay, 
he wanted to send him through the vision. A man comes in a vision and asks Paul to come to Macedonia. Remember? Like, who is this? And so he figured, this is where I'm, I'm supposed to go. In 1 Corinthians 14 says this, pursue love, desire the spiritual gifts, but especially to prophesy. Why? So that you can exhort, edify, and comfort others. Okay? And also get direction for your life. So right there, a vision. This is how God speaks. He'll speak with inner voice. He'll give you dreams. He'll give you visions. If you're open to it. If you're open to allow him to expand the way that he, his language with you. You see? I even, like, start putting a, a, a notepad next to my bed. Because God, and I ask God to speak to me through dreams. Because that's the best time sometimes to hear God. You're not all distracted. And you, you ask God to impact your dream life. And you write it down right away. And then you get an interpretation. If you can't interpret it, you ask someone who can do that well. Because a, a dream non-interpreted is not prophetic. It's, it's like when God speaks to us and we don't interpret what he's saying, it's not prophetic. It's not doing anything for you. Do you understand that? So, so here he gets a vision, and this is, this, is, this is what's really cool, is that in Troas, he there met Luke, who's the doctor. Could it be that God wanted to give Paul a whole continent by sending him to Europe, okay? Because no one had been there yet. So God wants to give him the whole continent for Jesus. Secondly, he wants to... Send Luke with him so that Luke can be his personal doctor. They're suggesting that because Luke was a doctor. And so that Luke could actually take care of, of Paul. Thirdly, could it be that if he had not said yes to the hindrances or, you know, respond well, that Luke would not have been with Paul and would not have been able to write Acts and Luke? Do you see the plan that God had with his two no's and simply sending a vision to go to Macedonia? I think that's pretty awesome. Behind God's no's, there's like, like the sea of love for you. Behind God's, like, he, I believe that God goes out of his way to to bring hindrances in us going the wrong direction. And sometimes we get offended by them. Come on. Do you get offended by God's silence or God's no's or God's delays, what seem to be a delay? Do you get offended? Do you feel abandoned? Do you feel like a, a, an orphan? Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. But I'm sending the Holy Spirit. Remember that. I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And so that he can lead you to all truth. So if you feel like something's not happening in your family or this is taking a long time and everything, just know that God is working on it. Tap into. Yes. Say, God, what are you doing in heaven so that I can do it on this earth? In Matthew 4, 15, 13, God says, Jesus said, I, anything that the Father did not plant in heaven, anything that he did not, you know, plant in, in heaven will be uprooted on the earth. Wow. Everything that the Father did not plant in your life, Jesus is saying, I want to uproot that so that we can put the, the plantings of the Lord, the vineyards of the Lord, the seed of the Lord there that will grow. Do you understand? Just like Pastor Josh says, a healthy church will grow a healthy church. But when it's unhealthy, it gets diseased up. And I mean, seriously, it's really, really, we end up growing as an individual, but the wrong way. We're inclined this way or we're inclined that way if we're a tree. So could it be that God has such a plan for you that you have no idea, just like Paul had no idea here? Isn't that amazing? And so, so there he goes. 
He goes, okay, let's keep, let's keep reading because I am aware of the time. <laughs> okay, let's keep reading. Uh, bring it back. There you go. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And from Troas, we put out to sea and sail, blah, 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 and then let's keep going. And then, then they, from there, they traveled, they went to Philippi, and we stayed there several days. And so they decided to go to prayer. And because there was no synagogue there, um, and the reason there's no synagogue is because there's not enough men there that are Jewish to have a synagogue. So on the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river and where we expected to find a place of prayer. And we sat down and began to speak to the women. Yay! Who had gathered there to pray. Yay! Yeah, men pray too. But look, keep going. One of these, those women was a woman from the city of... Ty Ty how do you say it? okay uh, named Lydia and that name means travail I want you to know that a dealer in purple cloth that means she's rich she was a worshiper of God the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message I say that the reason that a Macedonian man was sent in a vision to Paul is because there was prayer in that area she was not she did not know the ways of Jesus but she was a churchgoer she was one that had a heart that was ready to be opened up to respond to Paul's message of salvation and look what happened so this is God God giving Paul the right association to enter into that city and so let's keep going when she and members of her household, say with me, her household, were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. She persuaded. That was a big, big deal. Say with me, big deal. Prayer matters. You know this is a house of prayer. This is a place where you pray. But I want you to do something. I want you to start praying more specifically. More specifically. Because the prayers that took place there for, you know, the, it, 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 it began to, it's, it will soften the hearts of the people in Ohio, in Oahu, on, Oahu, on this island. Begin to start asking God to to soften the hearts of key people in the city. Key people in the... I remember when I, I asked God for one prostitute a few years ago, like years ago, 20 years ago. One, I said, give me one, give me one, God. And she ended up coming, um, coming on, a, on a Sunday, and she walked right by me, and I was sitting right there. And he goes, there she is, she's ready. She wasn't ready before, a year before. She's ready. And so I go to her. She brought her drugs. She brought all her stuff. We took her in the room next door, uh, in, the, in the room I parked, and we started to pray for her, set her free from everything that she's been doing because she was at one point so desperate because her friend had been killed during a call that she was talking to Michelle right before she was killed, and Michelle was too busy getting ready for her call. And she heard that her, daughter, her friend was killed. She was thrown out of the window of a hotel in Las Vegas. And she was so, 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 felt so bad and was so discouraged and wanted to kill herself. And she had a gun to her head. And the Lord said to her, she recognized his voice. And he says, go to ICLV. <laughs> and that day she walks right by me. I didn't know anything. And he says, she's ready. And I'm like, ah, I caught God. <laughs> I did. And you know what she started to do? She started, see, the power of prayer. You don't have to be all together. <laughs> God loves the prayer of the destitute and the broken. That's where he dwells. That's where he's, at. That's what he's after. He's after humble hearts, people that say, I need you, God. I made a mess of my life or, or they do or whatever. And so she said, she started, she came to the Lord and cleaned up her life and she was on crack and everything. And so she made a list of all the pimps and all her friends that were in prostitution. They all came from Minnesota. And she made a, a list and we started to pray, lay hands on that list and ask God to bring these people to the Lord. Do you know how many came to the Lord in that, on the, from that list? But one of them. 
And her name is Annie, and she now has a destiny house that we call, and she brings the prostitutes out, uh, you know, from the streets into, or wherever in the, in, the, in the States, it doesn't have to be just from Vegas, and she brings them for a year and disciples them, and cha- their lives are changed, you understand? She was just picked up, My, Joyce Meyer just, just um, adapted, adopted her, her, her book, and just did a report on her life, a testimony, came to Vegas and did that, just a month ago because the power of prayer is this awesome and so this is what happened here so there's this radical obedience I'm gonna ask Pastor Josh to come this radical obedience a surrendered life will access heaven and will actually give you the strength and the understanding and the wisdom to go through some tough times because what happens is then the devil the demons of hell will resist you. When there's a surrendered life, you are resisted by the enemy of your soul, and he will go with whatever he knows. So what does Paul do? He goes, and on his way to prayer one day, this girl, this slave girl, and she says, this is the servant of the Most High God, and she's trying to, she's annoying Paul. For several days, he put up with it. But she's saying the truth, but getting it from the wrong source. Come on. There's a lot of people that are false prophets that are called to be in the house of God and called to be the utterance of God and oracles of God, but they are in slavery. She was a slave, okay, to the to those that wanted to make a profit with her, right? And so she had an appearance of what could be godly, but denying its power. Okay, so that was the big industry in that area. And so I'm going to let you come up, Pastor Joshua. Do you want me to, what do you want me to do here? Like, can I get there at 7.15, 7.30? Is that too late? Too late. So go for it.